Good morning. Welcome to maybe our last outdoor service for a while. We'll see. We have been outside the first Sunday of every single month since we started this back in, I don't know, April? Yeah. April of last year. And it's been wonderful. We've always had amazing weather. We hope to move back inside. It's been fun. Um, and we'll do some, we're thinking still maybe Christmas Eve might have an outdoor service. We've, it, we've had fun with it. Someone asked me, do we need to wear a mask or not? And the answer is, I don't know. I mean, that's my really honest <laughs> answer. And we're outside. I haven't seen anyone saying if you're outside, you have to wear masks. So, and some of you are, some of you aren't. And we will all be happy with whatever each other is doing. Still remind you, if we're with the kids, you should have your mask on. It's important to protect them. We know they aren't vaccinated. I know of people who have gotten breakthrough COVID now. So, you know, next week when we go back inside, this is what I'm going to say is we strongly recommend the use of masks following the guidelines. But we will continue to read what the CDC and Boulder County Health says. So just pay attention. It'll be in the Friday email blast if we know by then. I would say, you know, next week when we go inside, if you're not sure, just bring a mask in your pocket, your purse, or then you have it. I just don't know the answer. So maybe. How's that? But we don't want people getting breakthrough COVID. So do what you're most comfortable with. But I think next week we would strongly recommend wearing a mask. Family camping is still next weekend because that's outside. So if you have not yet registered to go camping, and even if you say, oh, I'm going, but you haven't told Larissa, that does not mean you're, you're registered. You need to let the Director of Children's Ministries know if you are going camping, right? Yes, please. So let her know, send her an email. Don't tell her today, or if you do write it down, it's hard to remember. Uh, on August 22nd, we have some people interested in joining this church. So if you have been thinking that August 20, you'd like to join the church, you can do that on the 22nd. Let me know in advance. It's always helpful uh, to know, but we'll that day say if anybody wants to, they can. So August 22nd will be a joining day. Kyle, and you, as you make your way this way, I have one more announcement. You'll see Andy Cowell standing there writing at that table. That's Andy. Um, he is signing, I think, the card. There's a card there, and it's for Trinity United Methodist Church in Loveland. There you go. Thank you for modeling it, the, Andy. I appreciate that. And um, they had a little pipe break up in their upstairs of their building, and water was running down, running down for days, and no one knew it. They are completely out of their building. They don't need any help from us because insurance is covering it all, which is wonderful for them. But one of the things their pastor told me is they haven't felt really connected to the conference for a long time. And this is a way for us to reach out. So if you would sign the card, just a well wish, just your name, whatever, and we'll send that off to them this week. And just so that they know that we care about them and we understand what it means to have your building fill up with water. So if you would sign that, we'll send it off to them. That would be appreciated. Kyle, come here and make an announcement. Good morning, everyone. Come on, Kyle. Uh, Kyle, he's our facilities person. <laughs> right, my name is Kyle Perez. I'm the new facilities manager here at our church. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting quite a bit of a number of you, and it's it's been a really great joy. And actually, I want to invite most of you, or all of you, if you can, <laughs> to a build we're going to have um, making office for Larissa, yeah. and uh, that'll be on August 14th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And uh, if you're handy, if you're not, if you're friendly, if you're not, <laughs> we welcome you. Come, come, <laughs> come, come uh, spend some time and, uh, you know, let's fellowship and, you know, be together and, you know, make a difference for someone. Larissa. Yeah, kids can come and help move stuff. It's, uh, yeah. it's not kids. That's not an excuse to stay home. Yeah. And Kyle, the 14th is what day? It's a Saturday. Okay. okay. What so. time should they be here? Uh, it's from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., so any time that you can come is okay. Michael's making the universal gesture for lunch will be provided. <laughs> lunch will be provided, and drinks, and laughs, That's good. and memories. Thank you. So, okay, and come talk to me after service, or 
you can get my email on uh, the church website or uh, however you want to get in touch. Um, we'll hope to see you all. Thanks, Kyle. The purpose of this is to move the nursery so that people don't have to go all the way down to the south end of the building with their small people. So it's going to be very fun. A good day. Brian, let's worship. Let's indeed worship. Stand if you're able, please. I want to tell you a little bit about this song, A Place at the Table. When Shirley Murray wrote this hymn in 1998, in her own words, she was attempting to create a Christian equivalent of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights written by the UN, the UN General Council, thus connecting the global concern of Christianity with the global concerns of the United Nations and all humanity, food, clothing, and, um, and housing and medical care and social services. So Shirley Murray found a way to incorporate into this hymn the Christian imperatives of equality and justice for our entire world. at the table for everyone born clean water and bread a shelter a space a safe place for growing for everyone born a star overhead and God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy yes God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy. For woman and man, a place at the table, rejoicing roles, deciding the share. With wisdom and grace, dividing the power for woman and man, a system that's fair. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy. Just and unjust, a place at the table, a bizar of abuse with need to forgive. In anger, in hurt, a mindset of mercy for just as unjust, a new way to live. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy. Thank you very much. Be seated. Kids that, sorry, I invite the kids to come and join me. This was a very loud microphone. Come on up, guys. I'm going to sit right here, and I invite you guys to come and sit in front so we can have a conversation. <laughs> oh, good. I see Eva's coming. It's so fun to see her, Eleanor and Hannah. And we'll wave over to Jacqueline and um, Victoria, too. Very fun. It's fun to see you guys. So tell me, friends. What is your favorite food? Pasta. What else? Sushi. What about you, Hannah? Do you have a favorite food? Bananas. Those are some pretty good favorite foods. Pasta, bananas, and sushi. That could make a pretty good meal. Do you guys have a favorite meal? Do you have a memory of a meal that maybe you've eaten with your whole family? Or maybe it was a birthday party? Or maybe it was a holiday? Can you think of a favorite meal you've ever had? 
a birthday party. What do we eat at birthday parties, Anna? Cake, of course, that makes everything better, right? What about, do you guys remember having big Thanksgiving meals with your families? Even if it's just your family at home, but sometimes we get to have grandmas and grandpas and cousins and aunts and uncles and friends come over too. Maybe for Thanksgiving or Christmas, or maybe a 4th of July barbecue. Oh, those are fun too, right? All kinds. Barbecues are good. Yeah. Barbecues with sushi. Yeah, that would be pretty good. <laughs> Well, we are going to, we're talking today about a very important meal. Do you guys see this table right here? Do you know, do you remember what we do on the first Sunday of every single month here at church? We have a special kind of meal. Do you remember what it's called? It's called communion. Have you guys heard that word before? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so communion is the meal we come here to church. And it doesn't feel like a meal because it's not very much food, is it? We get a little cup of juice and a little cracker, right? So it's not a very big meal. It won't fill us up, but you know what? It's a pretty important meal. Do you know what it helps us to do? It helps us to remember Jesus, right? I think Eleanor's remembering this now. That's right. So when we eat that cracker, it's like the bread. And when we drink the juice, we're reminded of Jesus and his time with his disciples when he told them to eat and drink and remember me. And so every month we get to eat and drink and remember Jesus. Now we can remember Jesus every single day, right? But this is just a very special time that we can really remember him. So we're pretty lucky here at church to be able to do this every month, aren't we? Yeah, and we're pretty lucky that you guys get to participate. You guys get to eat this very important meal too. So later today, while we're having this important meal of communion, I want you guys to think about Jesus and what Jesus means to you. Can you do that? Okay, can we say a prayer, you guys? Say, hey God, thank you for Jesus. Help us to remember him at communion and every day. We love you, God. Thanks for loving us. Amen. pray. Gracious and loving God, we come before you this morning, enjoying the cooler temperature, thankful for the rain, counting our blessings that we are able as a congregation to gather still. We pray for all of those who have questions and doubts, all of those who this day are concerned and wonder. We pray for those who are facing COVID questions around COVID and we pray for Susie Burley who this day reminds us to be vaccinated, to keep distance and be safe, be with her as she recovers. We also pray for Christine Williams, Stephen's mother. She has treatable cancer, Lord, and we know that you will work with her and her care team. We pray for Steve McGrath as he recovers from surgery. We pray for others who we may not know, but we know in our hearts. And we know that you know where in this world your love, your care is needed. May your Holy Spirit touch each person. And may it touch each person gathered in this place and in this space. As we come to worship you, to sing praise to you, to be present with you. We pray these things in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen Jerry, thank you so much for that musical offering. We very much appreciate it. This is definitely the month of Jerry Luthi. On August 22nd, Jerry will be retiring from many years and decades of service um, at many churches, um, but particularly here at Mountain View for the last number of years. And so we want to honor and appreciate all of her musical gifts that she's been sharing with us. So thank you, Jerry, for that and so many years of work. Thank you, Linda. Okay. Thank you, Brian, and thank you, Jerry. So mark your calendar on August 22nd to be here as we celebrate Jerry's, I was gonna, not her last Sunday with us, just her last Sunday as a companist, because 
one of the reasons we're having church joining that day is Jerry's going to join the church. So that's wonderful. You're getting applause already, and it's not even the end of the month. So, no. And we're excited about that because we would hate to lose you as a person around here at the church. We love having you. So, Lots of things happening there. And it's fitting that it's the Jerry month in some ways because we're just continuing our study of psalms, and psalms are the songbook of the church. And Jerry certainly has played things based on psalms often, I am sure. So we are excited that uh, we can continue that. Today I'm looking at a type of song, ca psalm called the Hallel Psalms. How many of you are familiar with that term? A few of you. What? Bread? Halal, Halal bread. Okay, good. The, for psalms, it's referring to psalms of praising God. And there's a certain section in the psalm. There's lots of psalms of praise God, all kinds of them. But there's a certain section called that, and that's psalm about 113 through 117, although some people will include 18, which we talked about last week. I don't know. I wanted to read to you the 616th Psalm today. And think about, as you listen to these words, how we might use this on a communion Sunday. I love the Lord. Because God has heard my voice and my supplications. Because God inclined God's ear to me, therefore I will call upon God as long as I live. You have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I kept my faith even when I said I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, Everyone else is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord? I will lift my cup, the cup of salvation, and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving of sacrifice and praise and call upon the name of the Lord. I'd go back to verse 13. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. The 116th Psalm was used particularly at the time of Passover. During Passover, history records that this Psalm would have been sung and that that continues today that even today this psalm or a version of it would be sung during the celebration of Passover. And we all remember that Passover, or maybe we don't remember, but many of us know that Passover was what Jesus was celebrating with the disciples in the upper room on that last night when he instituted communion. So Passover and communion are often held closely together. We remember that these psalms remind us that as we give thanks to God, that we should have action around that. Do you remember or know why the people at Passover were thanking and praising God? Thank you. I'm glad somebody listened to the Sunday school lesson. Right now. The, many of you knew the answer. Um, the angel of death passed over, hence the name Passover, all who mark their door to save the firstborn child. So those of you who are firstborn children, be thankful also for Passover. Okay, babies too, whatever. The, the babies in the crowd are looking at me like, what, we're important. Yes, you are. But the, that was Passover. It was this Jew, and it's a huge celebration in the Jewish community and culture, and one that we as Christians can tie back to. It's important for us to remember our Jewish roots to remember that's where we come from, that Jesus talked about and practiced those traditions all of the time. Why? Because Jesus was Jewish. And it's good for us to know and connect to that. Throughout the study of Psalms, we've been looking at history and how we see the Psalms in action in our worship. But today I wanted to stop and say, how do we take the Psalm from then, a Psalm that was sung in celebration of Passover, and apply it to our Christian life? What does it mean to us today to lift up our cup? 
I'll lift up the communion cup later, and we remember that. Do we remember and go back to Passover every time we celebrate communion? No, because we look at it in a different way. For us, we're not remembering the Passover. We're remembering Jesus, because he said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So what's this cup about? What's this cup that we lift up? If you noted in the psalm, he said, the psalmist writes, I was upset, and you still like me. I, all these bad things happened in my life, and still there you are, and I need to turn to you. You were there for me even when I didn't know it. And in those times, I have to stop and give thanks. And now that I look backwards, says the psalmist, and see the places you were present in my life, I'm going to lift up my cup and ask you to fill it. Fill my cup, Lord. For many of us, that sounds like a passage that gives us comfort and joy. Fill my cup even when it's empty, even when I have nothing I can give, even when I doubt and question. Fill my cup. Give me peace. But there's more. There's a little more to that. Because it goes on when we talk about Jesus to say, will you drink from the cup? Filling it up's one thing, drinking from it is another. Most of you were raised to be polite people. I know that for a fact. And if someone, if you were in a home, someone's home, and they filled up your cup with something you knew you didn't want to drink, you wouldn't say, ooh, no, gross, I don't want that. You would leave it sit there on the table, though, wouldn't you? Oh, you might even move your cup a couple times to make it look like, have you ever done that on your plate? You move things around so people think you ate the food that you don't like? Mm -hmm. I know you people. I've done it myself. We, we don't want to be rude. But in this instance, asking God to fill up our cup and then never drinking from it, we're missing part of that, aren't we? As followers, as followers of Jesus, it's one thing to say, fill my cup up, it's the other to drink from it, and that can be difficult sometimes. It can be difficult to say, I want what you're giving me. I'm willing to accept the peace you're offering me, the strength you're giving me, the love that is poured out from me. And yet, as followers of Jesus, that's what we've been asked to do. And usually when we remember and drink from the cup, it's a great gift. Some of you are familiar with Henri Nouwen. He was a priest, and he left. He was famous for all of his books he wrote. He wrote a lot of books about spiritual practices and being connected with God. And he left and walked away from all of that to serve in a center for adults who had developmental disabilities. And this group always got a lot of donations. And one day, he writes in his book, can you drink from the cup? Can you drink from the cup? Here's the question. He writes in that book, one day he was invited to a fundraising dinner. And they said, bring some of the residents with you, which made him a little nervous because he wasn't sure how they would act or how they would behave. So he picked a few residents to go that he thought, you know, they, they function well in the world. We'll take them. They won't be embarrassed. It won't be a difficult time. And, and they got to the dinner and the banquet, and he explains, for, we just sit here mostly. We just sit quietly. At one point, I'll stand up and talk, but don't worry. You just sit. It'll be fine. And he wanted them to be comfortable in the space and place. And they were halfway through dinner, maybe, and one of the residents stood up and walked to the podium. He was really nervous because he didn't know what to do or say. Should he try to bring the person back to s sit down? But he knew that this person, when he had something in mind to do, if he was thwarted in that, he could become really loud and boisterous and pushy about what he wanted. So what should he do? What should he do? He decided just to let it unfold. Because the people who were there were to offer su financial support for this institution, so surely they would be accepting of whatever happened. So the man stands up at the podium, and I picture it as one where the speaker's here in the middle and the long table's on both sides, like the head table idea, which has fortunately died down these days. But I can picture that happening. And so he's standing there, and he just stops. And he grins at each person, a big, shiny, bold grin, greeting every person in the room 
literally making eye contact and smiling. And do you know what that does to people? When you really make eye contact and smile, that's something that we've been missing in this mask era, isn't it? But when you smile at people, what do they do back? They smile and they relax and they begin to feel a sense of joy. And he did that for a while. He did that for a while and then people started to get a little nervous because if someone just stands and grins at you for a long time, then you start to wonder, what do they want? What's happening? When's something else going to move? And so he just grinned and grinned, and then he reached over to the person who was sitting next to the podium, and he grabbed their water goblet. He grabbed their water goblet and dinged it. You know how people do? Ding, 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 ding. And then Henri says, I got really nervous at this point because he has now made eye contact, smiled, and gotten everyone's attention. And he didn't know what he was going to say or do. And the man looked and he said, happy? And people nodded and because they're polite. And he lifted the cup really high. And he said, if you're happy and you know it, lift your cup. <laughs> and he sat down. And he sat down. And there's something about that as we lift the communion cup. As we say, oh Lord, fill our cup. We lift it up. But then to drink from that cup, that balm of blessing, the cup that Jesus offers us. And to remember that we may be happy and it's okay to show it and to drink deeply. Uh, today we are having communion. Sorry. A and I want you all to know that you're all welcome to the table, every one of you. You don't have to be a member of this church or any church. You just have to be willing to lift your cup and have the courage or the need or the desire to drink from that cup. We remember that Jesus was celebrating Passover. Uh, maybe they had sung the 116th Psalm at that point and gathered them around. And he took bread and blessed it and said, pour out your spirit, O Lord, on this bread. Pour out your spirit that for all who partake of it, they would remember me. And then after they had eaten of the bread, he took the cup and he lifted it up. Pour out your spirit on this cup for each person gathered here. Pour out your spirit on each of us so that we would drink deeply from the cup, being filled with your love and your grace. Amen. Like the woman at the well I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. And soon I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting soul of my soul, bread of heaven, lead me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. There are millions in this world who are craving the pleasure earthly things afford. But none can match the wondrous treasure 
that I find in Jesus Christ my Lord. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. So my neighbor, if the things this world gave you, leave hungers that won't pass away. My blessed Lord will come and save you if you kneel to him and humbly pray. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you. We thank you for the cup, the cup that we see lifted up that reminds us to be in your presence. Fill us up. Amen. Our closing song is Soon and Very Soon. I'm almost positive you won't need your word sheet if you'll stand with me if you are able to sing Soon and Very Soon. <laughs> Thank you.